there's kind of these quirky qualities um, that I really enjoy exploring. Um, one of my favorites is looking at the spending habits of the three different doshas. Oh, wow. And so Vata tends to spend money as soon as Vata gets money. So it's kind of in the same breath that money comes in, it goes right back out. And that's because it is light and fast moving. And Pitta tends to hold on to money in a way where they like to spend on luxury items, but money is very important to them in terms of their status and how they're viewed um, by others. And for Kapha, they tend to spend the least amount of money because they're very slow moving and they like having stability. So they tend to be kind of some, somewhat thrifty, but out of balance, they can really become kind of hoarders. So in addition to looking just at the physical characteristics, we also look at some of the personality characteristics. And you know, even other things like memory. Vata tends to learn very quickly, but forget just as quickly. Pitta, in general, they tend to have a pretty good memory um, and very, very strong mental acuity. And Kapha, it can take them a long time to remember something, but once they've got it, they've got it for life. And once you start to understand these qualities about people, like even just in a company, for example, you could place somebody who has more of a vata physiology in a role where they're having to constantly socialize and stay kind of bubbly and enthusiastic. Um, and then put somebody who has maybe more of a kapha personality in charge of the budget and finances. And have somebody who has more of a pitta personality in charge of organizing everybody. Well, that's fascinating <laughs> and brilliant too. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, so the doshas are manifesting in, in people's lives mm -hmm. in, in very different ways. Um, now, when we talk about imbalance, mm -hmm. are there particular um, just very noticeable imbalances if you have a dominant dosha? Yeah. For, for Vata, the two biggest things that they complain about is their sensitive digestion. I mean, this is really a dosha that on a daily basis has to take into account their digestive state because it has such a huge impact on their state of mind, their overall energy level, and it's something that is constantly fluctuating. And because it is constantly fluctuating, because there's this really strong tie-in in Ayurvedic medicine between digestion and the state of your mind, their mental functions are kind of constantly fluctuating. What I mean by that is you know, they can have an off day in terms of their digestion and feel more anxious by the end of the day or have trouble sleeping. And they will sit there and go, what on earth, you know, did I, did I do? Like, why am I feeling like this? And they don't realize it's just due to the fact that they had a poor diet that day or were in situations where they weren't able to digest properly. So those are kind of the two hallmarks for somebody who lives with a vata imbalance. Okay. For pitta... It's definitely keeping the temper in check and trying not to become kind of a control freak because when Pitta, they're naturally very organized um, and they have, you know, a very, very sharp intellect. And so in balance, you know, they are great organizers in, in uh, companies or on teams. But when they get out of balance, they kind of get into this mode of like, forget it, I'll just do it myself. Nobody else can do it as well as, as, well as I can. And they have to really, really, really be cautious of getting into this point where they can't play well with others. <laughs> and when their pitta gets really out of balance, then they have to be cautious about um, inflammatory and autoimmune conditions, and especially like skin eruptions, um, rashes and things like that, um, and hyperacidity in the stomach. Okay. And that's kind of more at a later stage because... In the beginning stages, even of the imbalance, the heat kind of goes more to the mind and their personality, and their digestion is still functioning pretty well. Mm. Kapha, the main thing that they have to be very cautious of is because they're so content with just staying exactly where they are that you really have to work on staying motivated in movement, both mentally as well as physically. So just making sure that Kapha doesn't get too trapped in kind of their daily routine and, you know, kind of, well, I don't really want to change things because everything is just the way it should. So, you know, not being resistant to change in life because change is also evolutionary. Change also leads to the development of an individual. And the other thing is making sure that they move. 
they are, I'm always jealous of how physically resilient Kafa people are because, you know, they can like just get up and when they're in balance, run a marathon, come back and just kind of stretch it out and be like, that was a great day. Um, you know, that would kill somebody with a Vata physiology. <laughs> Um, but Kafa, even though they have tremendous endurance, they really have to motivate themselves to move on a regular basis. Mm -hmm.